Hey guys, it's James with the Comedy Preneur Show. So today we're going to talk to a great friend of mine and comedian, someone who's had an interesting comedic journey in their life from improvising to stand-up to writing web series to even writing for late night TV. He's a WGA writer and an amazing guy. We are going to learn so much. You guys are going to learn so much from this guy. So let's get to the show and let's get to my good friend and funny guy, Jonathan Giles. Let's do it. All right, guys. Today we have a very special, funny, amazing guest. His name is Jonathan Giles. He's a good friend of mine. I love Jonathan. We met a long time ago. He is one of my favorite people in the world. And he's going to talk to us about being a comedy writer, writing a web series, and writing for late night TV. So welcome, Jonathan Giles. What's up? This so, is, I feel like I'm in a space shuttle. I feel like I'm in outer space. I'm an astronaut. <laughs> so... Can you tell people a little bit about you, how you got into comedy and comedy writing and stuff like that? Uh, to, I know I know your story, but we're going to share it with the world now. Yeah, sure. Um, I, you know, I started, it's hard to say when I started. I was doing improv when I was in Georgia and lived in Florida, but I really got into stand-up when I moved to Chicago. That was 2013, uh, so not that long ago, honestly. Um, but um, yeah, that was when I, when I kind of like fell in love with comedy and decided to like really give like a full effort uh, of going out every night and telling really bad jokes to audiences who don't care. <laughs> you know, the, the, the journey that every comedian has to take. Yes. So then how'd you get into uh, writing comedy? Because you wrote, you wrote a web series called I'm Trying and you've also written yeah. on my TV. Yeah, um, I got, I started writing uh, when my girlfriend broke up with me. <laughs> I had a lot more time on my hand. <laughs> um, no, I was, uh, I was taking classes in Chicago. I was taking a, a, a class at uh, IO um, from a teacher named Michael McCarthy, who unfortunately just passed away a few days ago. Uh, rest in peace, Michael. Uh, but um, that was really kind of like where I learned, you know, like structure and you know, what different packets look like for a late night. And, you know, if you're going to write a pilot, you know, this is how you put together your treatment and actually, instead of just sitting down and writing without putting any thought into anything, like that was really what really hit home for me and helped me, um, you know, take off. And then I, I think I was in Chicago. I was on my way out. I was leaving Chicago at that point when I was taking those classes. And then um, I was fortunate enough to get synced up with uh, NBC. Um, in the diversity program, I got to participate in a late night writers workshop, which uh, I don't know when this is going to come out, but I think they're taking packets now if any reviewers are interested in um, writing for late night. Uh, definitely make sure you check that out. Um, but yeah, I got into that uh, 2018, I think I got selected to go and uh, we got to go to New York and uh, to 30 Rock. That was a pretty cool experience. I love 30 Rock. Um, and then, yeah, so like all those things kind of kept happening and eventually I, you know, was begin writing my own stuff and I decided to write a web series um, and the pieces of the puzzle come together and yeah, that's how, it, that's how it went down for me. So when you decided to write the web series, was it because, what was the reason behind it and how did you get that process started? Oh man, most of the things in my life uh are inspired by loss <laughs> so uh i had an idea for a web series uh i lost my full-time job they were making cutbacks and i found myself with a lot of time on my hand uh so i told myself i was like if this is gonna if this is the time to do it let's do it now uh you know it's not the same as the our current situation when everyone has time on their hands uh, you know i was able to leave my house and go do things but um yeah, I, uh, I had a little money that I had been saving. And, you know, another part of the inspiration beyond time for me was, you know, just a lot of my peers here in Los Angeles, especially, um, we're all trying to get writers jobs and trying to find um, opportunities like that. So everyone's writing a pilot. Everyone's writing something. Uh, not as many people, a lot of people are now, but not as many people are shooting something. 
So that was really like my motivation was, you know, I didn't want to create something that, I wanted to create something good, but my main like motivation wasn't necessarily, I want to create something that gets sold or picked up or get a thousand viewers. I, I mean, I didn't have those goals really. My goal was to create something that I could put in front of somebody that said like, here is a, a project that I took from soup to nuts. You know, I wrote it, I produced it, I acted in it. So that was really what got me uh, doing the On China Web series. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that a lot of uh, people forget is when you're a writer, if you can do multi things, if you can act, if you can write, if you can produce, edit, whatever, that's a big thing. That's why I started with shorts. Shorts are similar to web series. I mean, you obviously have a longer piece there, but having that, you're right, having that ability to show somebody, hey, I wrote this, then I went out and filmed it, then I edited it, and here's the final product. That's a that's a big deal because you're taking a big step in in you know in your own uh, career. Yeah, I think that, and I think that's kind of the the nature of this industry right now. If you look at um, a lot of the emerging talent, like there are people, especially with YouTube, they've created their channels, they've built an audience, um, and so even some of the networks, some of the a long time ago I had a chance to speak to someone from Comedy Central and they were up front this is who was in charge at the time uh was like we look for people who write produce and can film you know act in their own things like those are the type of shows uh broad city you know um like that's like a pure example of that and then of course even some of the other things like uh like sketch like Key and Peel, Amy Schumer like those like all those, all those people are very like multi, like you said, fast that they don't have to necessarily, it makes, e it makes it easier for the networks and the production companies because they don't have to like start from scratch. Right. Whereas in the past, like if, uh, you know, Roseanne or Jerry Seinfeld was doing a late night set and they're like, oh, that comedian's funny. Now let's create something around them. They're, most places now I think are looking for something that's already kind of created that they can help support and develop and grow. What is that ball in your hand? I'm going to ask you that right now. Oh, I'm so sorry. I keep picking this up. Uh, it's one of my little nervous. This is um, – It's interesting it's, looking. That's why I'm It's asking. a conversation ball, really. It's like one of those icebreaker thingies oh, where cool. you, like, toss it to someone. Um, like, if we were doing one of those really cool Instagram videos that are out right now, it tossed it up in the air, and then you would have it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we're not that cool. But anyways, uh, it's just, like, a ton of questions on it, like – who would I like to meet? That's a good then, question. Who would you like to meet? Yeah. Like, business, who would you like to meet? Man, I just want to go outside, bro. <laughs> I don't even know if I have a good answer for that right now. Uh, maybe Dr. Fucci or whatever his name is. Oh, yeah, yeah. That dude's awesome. Yeah. Well, what yeah, about in the business? Who's like your idol or who's the person that you kind of looked up to or tried to emulate a little bit? Man. I got to meet Larry Wilmore last year. That was huge for That's me. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, one of my favorite stand-up comedians uh, is Gerard Carmichael. We've talked about him before. Um, I think it would be, he's an interesting person just to have a conversation with. Um, Issa Rae, I think, uh, it would just be cool to just ch ch chat with her. and Because, like, she kind of came up from a web series to where she's at now with having a, sh a show on HBO, producing multiple other people's shows. She's in movies, so... So, yeah, those are the kind of people that kind of people who are creating their own stuff. That's awesome. So be, the difference between creating your own web series and then writing for uh, Late Night, was it uh, Lily Singh? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I uh, was a writer this past year uh, on A Little Late Lily Singh. Yeah. And what was the difference there? And how was the, what was the process like between those two things? And what is the Late Night process like? Because a lot of us have no clue. Yeah, so um, I think the biggest difference is, like, when if you're writing a web series, and I think most of the time, like, uh, I mean, I'm sure people write web series where they fully cast it uh, and bring in actors, but, you know, I think a lot of web series, people are kind of thinking about their personal story or their personal point of view, um, and that's how things are being created. Um, and then, of course, if you're writing late night for another host, you're writing in someone else's voice, you're thinking about the jokes that they would tell maybe more so than you know your personal point of view or the jokes you would tell right yeah and 
what was that process to learn her voice? Like how hard was it to learn? Cause you know, as a comedian, you have to know your voice to write jokes, yeah. but how, how hard was it to learn her voice to write in those jokes? Well, I think that's it. I think like, that's kind of like, you just sort of said it like, it's not necessarily like I would write a joke that I would never, I would still write things that I find funny. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't go out of my way to write things that I only thought she was funny, but over time, like, you know, um, if you're familiar with her YouTube page, or if you watch her show, you know, there's certain things that she's into. Like she loves hip hop culture. Um, there's, you know, she likes doing characters. Like, so you kind of understand like, oh, like these are the nip, these are the lanes that I also connect with. Uh, like if we ever were doing a bit with hip hop related, uh, I kind of felt like, oh yeah, not that I was always gonna pitch something she was gonna like, but I felt like I was gonna be close. Right. You know, if she's if, if she had like she wanted to do a monologue on women's beauty products, I'm sort of like, oh, bruh, I don't have anything for you, but I'll still I'll still try to write jokes around it, and hopefully, uh, you like one of them. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I think that's it though. Like you kind of just try to you know pick your wins when you can, uh, and, and and understand that person's point of view uh, is is really big too. Now, what would you say is the hardest part of writing? You did mention outlines and how important those are. Um, can you kind of go into your process of writing and write, especially in the web series thing that, that you created, what were the process and the steps through that and how hard was um, writing? Yeah. So I would say I'm trying was kind of a, a labor of love. Uh, I had been working on that idea. I, I originally wrote it as like a pure pilot. Um, and then again, like for the reasons I'm saying, you know, like, I could write a 40 page pilot, hopefully an agent reads it and likes it, or I can shoot something that, you know, is a little bit more digestible. Um, so that was kind of my process. I sort of deconstructed my pilot um, and tried to give it a bit of a storyline. So um, some things that are in my web series, I weren't in my pilot. And that was kind of a fun, interesting uh, exercise because you're like oh it's almost like if this was a season if I had six if I had six episodes to tell a season what would that look like so it was like little chunks of ideas of a, of a full show um so I think now I mean again like the idea of outlining uh, I guess it just depends on what kind of web series you're working on too because not every web series tells a story like you're talking about shorts yeah uh earlier i mean even in the category web series i think even like the idea of just people talking to camera kind of loosely fits into that idea as well um so there's a lot of different types of uh things you can do but i think for me is to kind of have an idea i like doing narrative stuff uh where there's you know, there's characters who have wants and needs so i try to think about like okay if i'm gonna do this new thing like i'm actually writing something now i try to think you know, A, let me introduce my characters and who they are in my first episode. B, let me see how much money I have. <laughs> like, how many episodes could I literally make? Uh, and then, you know, what's the story I want to tell as I go down that path? Right. Yeah. And then how important is, is an outline for that? Like, how, how much do you outline and what's your outline process? Because some people go, oh, I can just write whatever. And then they end up, they don't know where they're going. But yeah. I mean, I think if you're doing a narrative where there's an idea of, hey, the character's going to start at one point, he's going to start at A, and he's going to end up at Z, I think it is important to outline um, because you don't want to get to, like, in the middle of your of your story, and now you're like, oh, I'm going to go in a different direction, but it doesn't gel with anything you've done all the way up right. to that point, um, which is the same way if you're just writing a pilot, you know? I'll, I'll get in the middle of my pilots all the time, and I'm like, oh, I have a new fun idea but then that actually impacts characters from the, my, my cold open or my first act. Uh, and so sometimes you just got to be patient and be like, okay, let's not necessarily go run off on this new idea. Let's, let's finish what I've outlined already. Um, but then again, like if you're just doing sort of like a, like a daily news type web series, you probably don't have to outline as much. You probably need to know what the structure and the format of your show is but you don't necessarily need to have like an outline that tells a story. Right. Perfect. Yeah. So do you ever let your characters kind of tell you the story as you get writing? Like, so I write the outline, I'll start writing and I have the whole story pointed out, but then yeah. 
characters tell you stuff. They, I mean, they really do. They talk to you and say, hey, this is not what I would say in this situation, or this is what I would do, or whatever. And then you kind of get a new feel. Does that ever happen to you? Or am I, I just think <laughs> It does, yes. I think as much of the homework that you can do up front, uh, keeps you from getting to that point because it, it is very easy. I think like I'll be writing something or I'll have a fun character and then I'll go watch, I don't know, Watchmen or some show and I'll be like, oh, that, that informs like, oh, that'd be cool. Wouldn't that be cool if my character did this? But then you try to bring it back into your script and you're like, ah, that, that, again, you're sort of like, you find yourself going back and having to rewrite your whole first act or changing a character. And so I think like in that case, the idea of having your characters tell you things about themselves, the same way you would write an outline, you kind of want to have like character descriptions. Um, so like, if you know who your main characters are, go ahead and inform, you know, like, are they shy? Are they outgoing? You know, what are the type of things they might say in a conversation? So that way, as you're starting to write your web series or your script or whatnot, you already have those answers. Right. Um, and it's also, it helps you because you may say you want to have a character who all of a sudden, like in your, when you first thought of him, nice guy, loves his family. But then for some reason, when you get to your act two, he's like calling his wife a dirty name <laughs> you know, because she didn't make him dinner. You're like, no, 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 that's not who this character is. I just kind of wrote a joke. And it, so, it, you know, you want to make sure your character descriptions are kind of already set for you too. Perfect. Now, are you going to do a second season of uh, I'm Trying, or what's the process with that, or where, where's that going? Right now, I don't, I don't have any plans to do it. Um, you know, I've had a couple production companies express a little bit of interest, but again, my, my goal was never to sell it, or I didn't have, like, a lot of long-term series ideas for this. Uh, so, you know, if someone wants to send me money, help fund it yeah for sure well let's have that conversation but um you know i think for right now i think like that web series did what i wanted it to do as far as my career goes um granted if i'm in a position one day to to do something bigger with it i'd love to but right now no, no goals no plans for it perfect and then one last question what are your aspirations what are your career asp aspirations goal and you're a wga writer now is that right yeah i'm in the wga yeah um Congrats. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I think my biggest aspirations is just to be able to tell stories. Uh, so, I mean, everyone has like sort of a unique personality, things that people may or may not know about them. I think we've got to know each other pretty, pretty well over the last few years. Uh, I'm a pretty introverted dude. People don't know that about me because I think they see me doing stand up or they see me acting weird in a video or in a web series. They're like, oh, this is an outgoing guy. I like telling stories of sort of like underdog people, uh, people who maybe aren't necessarily the first to speak out. They, don't, they weren't necessarily the class clown. Uh, that sort of fit more in my character, who I was as a person. So the more I can kind of express those stories and people who kind of feel like, not that they don't matter, but maybe they get overlooked. Yeah. Uh, those, those are the kind of stories I like to tell, so. I think, I think a lot of people can empathize with that because a lot of people feel that way. Like they feel like they're not even the own main character of their own life story. Sometimes I know I feel that way. Yeah, sometimes. yeah for sure. Anytime I do like a, uh, like a relationship type story or joke, you know, people love those ideas where like she said, and then I said, it never happens that way. It's usually she said, I drove home sad. And then I woke up the next morning. I'm like, Oh, I should have said that. You know? <laughs> So I've, I, I, I definitely connect with like the sort of na naive uh, Michael Sarah type characters that are kind of like, uh, I, I want to give them a little bit more of a voice, but allow them to be themselves. Yeah. I think yeah. Jesse, Jesse Eisenberg might be my new favorite person for that kind of stuff. 100%. Like, yeah, he fits that. Sam Richardson's kind of one of those characters that, you know, they're not the loudest in the room, but they're really smart and they're funny. Yeah. Have you seen the, the Art of Self-Defense yet? I started, no, yeah, I did finish it. It's a weird movie. <laughs> it's, a good movie it's a good movie, though, but it, like, it definitely is like one of those underdog weird stories. I loved it. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where he, he ends up with the German Shepherd. Out there. <laughs> so yeah. good. So good. All right, well, thank you. Where can people find you at, Jonathan? Where can they find the web series? Oh, I'm going to be at home fun? for the next few weeks, dude. Um, <laughs> online, online, not at your house. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, don't show up at my house. I'm not answering the door. Um, 
I, you can find me. So on most socials, I'm at at J Giles comedy. That's J G I L E S comedy. I'll put it in. Uh, and then, um, sort of, that's my website too. Yeah. J Giles comedy.com. All right, cool. Thank you so much for being on and uh, I appreciate it, man. What a show, right? What an episode. What great stuff. He dropped bomb after bomb on us on that. His journey was amazing and is amazing. So grateful that Jonathan Giles came on the show. If you want more interviews like this, more stuff to help you with your comedy career, whether it be comedy writing, improvising, stand-up, whatever it is, like, subscribe, follow. New stuff is coming every week. I'm dropping all kinds of stuff, interviews, knowledge bombs, everything for you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great week. Bye. Yeah.